pregnancy in class. I am Jamie Houston, and I wanted to take the opportunity to speak on some of the professional dispositions we've reviewed and how I aligned and reflected them onto myself. Um, so for the first question, what dispositions do you possess that you think will make you a successful teacher? Um, aside from what I would hope to be everyone's standard, honesty, professional conduct, dedication, things like that, um, I do feel that I possess several of the other dispositions as well. Um, number one is the respect for the diversity of others. Um, a big passion of mine in my personal life as well as professional life is honoring and embracing the differences in others. I do come from a cult culturally diverse family and know the importance of creating that inclusive environment that everyone feels welcome in. Uh, the second would be fairness, and that's just in following the golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated. Although we do hold an authoritative position to the students, um, I do think that there should be a mutual understanding of respect that I as a teacher would need to earn. Um, one of the most important things you can do in the classroom and in life um, is build positive relationships and always assume positive intent. Um, and then having that respectful baseline to build off of is crucial to everyone's success, the teacher, the student, the classroom, the district community, all of that. Um, this, the third uh, is advocacy. So as those relationships are built, you do begin to understand each other on multiple levels that allows you to see how they learn, um, understand the student's developmental patterns, and have the ability to gauge whether or not they are internalizing and understanding the material. Um, that then opens up opportunity for advocacy and support as needed. Um, so starting with that baseline and mutual respect, building those positive relationships, and then being able to advocate for your students. Um, and that's, you know, knowing when to apply or supply resources, anything that benefits their positive, successful learning for them. Um, the second question, what dispositions do you need to work on before you enter the classroom as a first year teacher? Provide an example. So for this one, I was trying to reflect on it and I, I, I just assumed that I would need to work on high expectations um, because I don't have experience in the classroom yet. I would need to work on assessing those skill levels, uh, working on how to identify strengths and weaknesses within the classroom. And I currently don't have a baseline or real world data to start that or build on that. Um, so one way for me to hold up that disposition would be to collaborate with other teachers, um, use any school or district data-driven results to see the different areas and gaps where I can kind of start to draw off of and build that up for myself, and that would then reflect onto the students. Uh, for the third question, how do the dispositions demonstrate your ability to understand other cultures, genders, and learning differences to build stronger relationships with students and families? How does potential bias affect teaching? So basically at the root of all of these dispositions is respect and positive relationship building. Um, in order to fall into any of those categories, you would need to start off with that and build upon it. Um, of course, if there is any potential bias in teaching, you know, that can lead to lower classroom expectation, uh, lower grades, lower support, less resources. I mean, it would kind of um, build a negative effect or just kind of have a cloudy classroom environment that is based on, you know, external things outside of the student's educational knowledge and skill set, um, which is why it's so important to expand those relationships early and embrace their diversity. Um, it helps broaden your understanding of their ability to learn, um, their access to resources or communication styles, and just makes them feel comfortable and encouraged while in the classroom. Um, the fourth question uh, is, how do you anticipate using feedback from your annual performance evaluations, observations, and data on student performance to adjust your dispositions and teaching practices to benefit learning? So being able to accept constructive criticism and feedback is a crucial part of anything, um, especially being a teacher, as it does help promote our continued learning as well. Um, so if I were to receive feedback that, you know, maybe encouraged me to make a change or identified a gap in my teaching approach, um, I would reflect on these dispositions, try to understand, you know, where that's coming from, where I may be lacking and try to find uh, personal development or another sort of resource that I could reference to help fill those gaps. Um, ultimately, my goal is to be a good representation of all of the dispositions. Um, and then of course, you know, excel in my career and be a respected member of the district and community and make a positive change in my students' lives. So um, being able to see those evaluations, being able to reflect on them and compare, you know, from year to year would be a huge benefit to um, my students, myself, my approach, my collaboration, my community, all of that. Um, so I thank you for your time and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you.